Hello everyone and welcome to Aviation A to Z. Today we are going to study about module 8 basic aerodynamics of flights. The first topic is atmosphere. The question will come in your mind why to study atmosphere? The answer is very simple. The atmosphere plays an important part in study of aerodynamics of an aircraft because aircraft produce lift and thrust by the reaction of air present in atmosphere. So let's get started. Atmosphere is an envelope around the earth's surface. Atmosphere of the earth is divided into mainly five basic layers which is troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, ionosphere or thermosphere and exosphere. The troposphere ranges from mean sea level to 11 km, then 11 km to 50 km, mesosphere from 50 km to 80 km, while ionosphere 80 km to 500 km and exosphere above 500 km. And Earth's layer starts from troposphere to ends on exosphere. But since mainly all aircraft fly in stratosphere, we have to deal with this layer only. Many people forget the layer sequence, so as per me, it's not given in any book, but remember the reverse ABCD from Z to A. T comes the first, then S, then M, I, N, E in a reverse order. I know it's not interesting, but you can use it to remember. Now troposphere. It is the smallest atmospheric layers. It contains about 80% of atmospheric air and properties, which we are going to discuss where it is widely here. Next comes the stratosphere. This layer is ideal for aircraft and many aircraft crews in this layer since there are very less turbulent air. It contains 10% of total air. The total percentage of air is comprised of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen and 1% other gases. As I mentioned previously, aircraft fly in troposphere and stratosphere that is from mean sea level to 45,000 feet the reason is the air above 45,000 feet become less dense and engine are unable to generate required power there are different temperature pressure and density at mean sea level and at different location now the question arises how can i know all this the answer is very simple the international standard atmosphere also known as isa committee is formed which is an initiative by icao those who don't know what is icao link is above check it out ISA is formed to set a uniform standard throughout the world. I think you got a clear idea about the atmosphere. So let's move ahead. Now we will learn the effect of atmosphere on temperature, pressure and density as we go from mean sea level to the higher altitude. Let's begin with the temperature. Many people wonder how to define the temperature. but here is a simple definition. It is a unit to measure a heat and a flow of heat in a surrounding. Now we will see the effect of atmosphere on temperature as we go from mean sea level to the higher altitude. At mean sea level, the ambient temperature is 15 degrees Celsius according to ISA. The ambient temperature means surrounding temperature. The temperature has other unit as well. In other unit, it is 288.15 Kelvin, 59 degree Fahrenheit, and 519 Rankine. The Rankine is a unit which is when compared with 1 degree Fahrenheit is equal to 461 Rankine. As we go higher in troposphere from mean sea level to 11 km, the temperature decreases at constant rate. The rate at which the temperature decreases constantly in troposphere is known as lapse rate which is denoted by a Greek letter lambda. The value of the lapse rate is equal to minus 6.5 degrees Celsius per thousand meter or minus 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer or 1.98 degrees Celsius per thousand feet or for simple calculation you can take 2 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. The negative sign used in value indicates the decrease in temperature as we grow higher. From 11 km to 20 km or you can say at 65,000 feet the temperature remains constant which is minus 56 deg degrees Celsius and this reason is often referred as tropopause or lower stratosphere. 
Thus, due to the constant temperature and less turbulent air in this region, aircraft must likely to cruise at this altitude. The aircraft which fly in this region are mostly turbojet or turbo fan powered engine aircraft. Now from 20 km or 65,000 feet above up to 50 km, the temperature increases with constant rate but we are not required to calculate the rate because aircraft do not fly above lower stratosphere or tropopause. Remember guys the model question asked from this topic I will give 5 seconds to answer. The temperature at mean sea level is. Next comes the value of lapse rate in troposphere is. At tropopause, the temperature is. Next comes the pressure. The pressure is defined as a measure of force per unit area, which is P is equal to F upon A. The weight of molecule applied per unit area is actually what we call an atmospheric pressure. At mean sea level, the ambient pressure or atmospheric pressure is 14.7 psi, or there are different values of pressure in different units. For example, 10132.5 pascal, 1013.25 millibar of Hg, 29.92 inch of Hg, and 760 mm of Hg. As altitude increases, the pressure decreases non linearly, or you can say non uniformly. An important point to remember is that at almost 18,000 feet, the pressure becomes half of that at mean sea level which is 1013 millibar at mean sea level and reduces to 506 MB. At upper stratosphere, the pressure almost becomes a small about 28 millibar of Hg. Next comes the density. The density is a unit which measures the mass per unit volume, means mass of molecule present in definite volume. The formula for density is rho is equal to mass per volume. Density of air at mean sea level is 1.2 to 5 kg per meter cube and for water is 1000 kg per meter cube which means water is almost 816 times heavier than air. As we go from mean sea level to the higher altitude, the density also decreases non-linearly and become half at about 23,000 feet. The property which is similar to the density is the humidity. Humidity is defined by a quantity representing the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere or in the air. In humidity, there is two types a relative humidity and absolute humidity. Relative humidity is defined as the amount of water vapor present in the air expressed as a percentage of the amount needed for saturation at the same temperature. Relative humidity is a ratio of absolute humidity upon the maximum humidity. In simple, it means how much water vapor present in actual upon the maximum water vapor it can hold. Again, it's time for the question. So let's get ready. The pressure at the mean sea level is. You will get a 5 second for each question. Then comes at what altitude the pressure almost becomes half of pressure at mean sea level. The value of density of air at mean sea level is. The relative humidity is always expressed in. So try to solve as much as possible questions. There are many questions available from this topic on internet. So search in your internet about module 8 question pdf and try to solve maximum question as soon as possible. As you have seen this video, you have a clear idea about the atmosphere. And if any doubt related to video or any question, ask me in the comment box. Hit a like button, share it to your friends and finally subscribe for more amazing videos related to aviation and modules. And finally, thanks for watching.